So I want to talk to you a little bit about how to evaluate real estate. We have a lot of people that are using like builder terms like price per square foot, which is about as accurate as throwing a hair grenade versus a sniper rifle. And I used to be an appraiser for uh, just under seven years. And one of the things that I was able to have was a, an opportunity at the true foundation on how to invest in real estate by understanding what it's worth, right? So there's three different approaches to value. Us real estate agents use the sales comparison approach the most. The commercial people use something different. But the sales comparison approach is just basically what it says. You're comparing sales to each other and you're adjusting for the differences between the properties, right? And there's ways that you are able to keep up with the market going up or down. And that's called the successive sales method where we look at comps and see what their appreciation is and we make time adjustments for these really crazy V markets that we find ourselves in these days, right? Now the sales comparison approach is a different type of thing. You can't outsource this to a software. I mean, we watched Zillow mangle this up, right? You actually have to come up with a sales comparison grid like the appraisers that you meet use and you make line by line adjustments based on what the neighborhood is reporting for each of these features. It's not an opinion piece. It's just basically what the market's warranting for the difference, right? So we know we can always say that prices are going up, you know, 13% in a year. So we can add 1% a month or, you know, one and change a month and do the easy math. We're already doing this. So don't feel overwhelmed, but you're, you need to also do it with what a three car garages versus a four car garage or a hundred feet of linear lake frontage versus 500 linear feet. And that's an entire class that I have on my YouTube channel. So go ahead and watch me go through that process. But the sales comparison approach is what most of us hang our hat on. Now there is another approach called the cost approach. And this is basically used for insurance. The cost approach is what your house would cost to replace plus the land value minus depreciation and site improvements. So we're not using this a lot, but it is a good rule of thumb to kind of filter through. So if I'm looking at a house that's 2000 square feet, for $500,000, I should ask myself before I pull the trigger, what would it cost to build this house brand new versus it being 20 years old? And if I find out that you know it's less to build it brand new, then that would give me positive equity and I would choose to build the house versus buy a resale. So we're still utilizing this in a very basic uh, um, methodology, but finding out what things cost brand new are important. Here's another reason why it's important. You're gonna go take down an investment property that's 3,000 square feet and all the comps are 5,000 square feet. And you wanna go see if I add 1,000 square feet onto it, what will that return me? And you're paying today's square footage prices based on resale square footage prices, so it might not be such a good investment, or it might be a good investment. I don't make any blanket statements. Every market's different, and every time within the market's different. So a cost approach is also something that we should have some real awareness to. And then the last part is the income approach. And for the longest time, people were utilizing this for, for multi-units, but now we have vacation rentals and all of these uh, really cool ways of generating higher returns on our real estate. So the income approach is a hybrid model. It's part sales uh, comparison, finding out what the comps are, but it's also evaluating property based on the income that it reproduces. So you can use gross rent multipliers, cap rates. We use a lot of these different terms, but they all essentially are showing you what kind of investment they will uh, turn out to you uh, uh, through one algorithm or another. Now the income approach is very, very important. And this is why I'm such a fan of multi-units or apartment buildings. I don't care if it's residential side, four units or under, or over four units as a commercial portfolio. But what I love about these are, these are pretty much economy proof. So for example, if I own a 10 unit building and I have each unit rented for $1,000 per unit, if the economy shifts and then just because the economy shifts doesn't mean the housing market's going to be the same. Okay, so that's a very current observation. But if the economy shifts and the housing market also shifts and people start to go through distressed sales, foreclosures, I don't think we're going through short sales for a while because we have so much of this inflation built into our equity right now. But as the environment changes and the housing market gets really, really thin, um, what can happen is people start to lose their houses and they become tenants. So it kind of floods the rental market and then rents start to go up and it's great to be a landlord of an income producing rental complex like that. Now, if the market goes up and rents are stagnant, 
but people are paying through the roof prices, then that 10 unit is also evaluated by the sales comparison approach. So all the other 10 unit buildings and 12 unit buildings are going up in value. So you sell in a high market because the equity is increased or you sell in a low market because the rate of return is increased because rental prices have gone up, your base of renters has gone up and your property is performing in that lane. So it's really Teflon to each climate, sort of like a bar. People are drinking when they're happy and people are drinking when they got the blues, right? So it's a very cool element of it. The way that I look at things as a real estate brokerage owner is that I wanna be in front of what the trends are. So when we're looking at the market like this, my opinion right now is that we're gonna continue to appreciate, um, but I don't think we're going through 2008 again. I mean, if you look at the basic bullet points, we don't have all these adjustable loans out there. We don't have all of these people that um, uh, had 100% no stated income <laughs> or stated income loan docs, 100% uh, uh, financed. Uh, our climate's different. Our inventory is low because frankly, nobody was building houses in eight, nine, 10, or 11. We were hanging in like a loose tooth. So knowing kind of what's going on in the future uh, and what's coming down the road, that speculation part is a real advantage because if you do your critical thinking in that little bridge, then you know exactly how to perform for the next three or four years ahead. And it's kind of like design. Like everybody now has gold handles and gold faucets and we were getting rid of brass 10 years ago. So it just takes one person who has a good eye to be able to put something out there and people start to copy it, right? So we are in 2022. Um, I think that uh, vacation rentals are a very, very good model for you. I think multi-units are an extremely good model for you. I'm not a big fan of investing in property that has HOAs or condo association fees because it just comes off the profit. I'm not really a big fan of uh, buying very old properties where your uh, reserves are going to have to be high because of a, of a, a perpetual need to replace and update things. So just a, a little bit of a glimpse of how I look at real estate as a former appraiser. Everything should be based on evaluation. So if we want to do ourselves a favor, just as realtors, to, in May of 2022, what we will prevent ourselves from doing is listing properties based on what they were selling for four months ago. Because then what creates uh, uh, from that is a narrative that property values are going down and you're seeing price reductions. What we should be doing is pricing just a little under the peak values to where we're still getting list price or over list price, days on a market then shorten and we can stabilize the market because I don't think the housing market is a, a, a parallel stick to the economy in this next reset. So I could be wrong. If I am, save this video and resend it to me and call me out because my God, I'm not perfect on there, but that's just where I sit on the market right now. I hope you guys have a great day.